Welcome back. It is the Arvo Flow Sports Hour, and it's time to talk basketball with Dan Crouch, the basketball man here on the Flow Airwaves. Good to be back with you again, Dan. How are you doing? Thank you, mate. I'm doing well. Always doing well when there's uh, good basketball on, as you know. So, yeah, no, things are good. Well, the basketball is keeping you busy. There's no doubt about that, both in Australia and in the United States, which is where we'll start. We'll talk some NBA where, uh, well, it's one of those rare weeks in the calendar, Dan, where there's not a whole lot of games that have been played for us to discuss. We will preview all the games that will be on tomorrow morning. But uh, firstly, just bring us in on the NBA dunk contest. Yeah, you're right. It's the quiet all-star break time of year, so no games for a few days, and uh, the players lucky enough to get selected get to play off in the all-star game. Um, But yeah, one of the highlights of every all-star weekend, of course, the slam dunk contest. So in in years gone by, we've seen Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Vince Carter, and other such legends uh, claim the crown, but it was a bit of a different vibe this year with um, four relative no-name players. Um, and the the one that stood tallest was a young man named Mac McClung. Now, you've probably never heard that name if you're a casual basketball fan. That's because I think he's played a grand total of two games in the NBA. Um, but, man, he is an unbelievable slam dunker, and he put on a show to remember in that one. Um, he, he did four dunks, made all of his dunks on the first attempt, and all four of them were things that I have never seen before. Um, you know, usually there's only so many different things you can do in a dunk contest, and there's a lot of things that um, get a decent score, but because someone's done it in the past, it's hard to give it a perfect 50. But, um, yeah, this young man um, put up three of his four dunks were a perfect score, and the one that wasn't was only one point off and, and probably should have been a perfect score as well. So, yeah, he put on a show to remember, and launched his Instagram following from, I think it was 90,000 followers to 1.1 million now. So, yeah, he stole the show. Certainly sounds that way, Dan. It all reminds me a bit of uh, the AFL Grand Final Day just happening before the actual showpiece final in the NBA. Let's talk about the actual game, though. Uh, Team LeBron losing in the end to Team Giannis. Now, uh, just explain for those who are not initiated in the basketball scene, Dan, how this works. Obviously, LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, two of the stars in the NBA. Why is it those two that get to be, uh, I presume, the captains of these respective sides going at it in the All-Star game? That's right. They're the captains. Uh, Once upon a time, the All-Star game was Uh, East versus West, so all the players picked from the Eastern Conference uh, squared off against all the players picked from the Western Conference. Um, About five or six years ago, they changed the format because uh, the East-West rivalry was just non-existent. That all fell flat. Um, So they basically changed it so that you still voted in players from each conference, um, but rather than playing East versus West, the top vote-getter from each conference, which this year was LeBron James in the West and Giannis Antetokounmpo in the East, um, they would actually act as captains and they would they would pick players from from the players voted in. So um, re- really like a schoolyard um, lunchtime game of soccer where you're picking your teams and um, you want to get first picks to get the, the best player available. And um, yeah, so it's a, it's a real um, schoolyard vibe to it now. No one wants to be the last player picked. Um, there's a little bit of pride involved. Obviously, if you are the last player picked, you might have a bit of a point to prove out there. But uh, I think they thought that might put a bit of flair back into the game, but um, hasn't really been the case. But nevertheless, it's been a lot of fun, that format. And, um, yeah, first, first time LeBron um, picked a losing team this year. So uh, I think he was 5 or 6 and, and O oh up until this year. And, um, but yeah, Team Giannis getting the chocolates this year. There we go. Uh, well, I, it brings back a bit of PTSD, I have to say, Dan, because uh, in those lunchtime battles, I was never first picked. Um, but we'll move along and uh, we'll talk about all the games happening in the NBA tomorrow. And uh, the best of the bunch, really. There's three of them here, Dan. Uh, Nuggets v Cavaliers. Who gets up in this one for you? Yeah, I think um, Cavaliers at home... Uh, will be tough to beat, but Nuggets have been the best in the West all year, so I'm going to I'm going to tip them on the road. Um, 
players are all recharged after the All Star break now, and I think we've got about 25-ish games remaining until the playoffs. So things are really heating up in these uh, in these top of the table sort of clashes now. Memphis v Philadelphia is another one that will certainly be attracting eyeballs. How do you see this one playing out? Yeah, I can't wait for that one. I'll be picking Philadelphia on their home court. Um, Obviously, Joel Embiid, MVP candidate, who's been runner-up for two years in a row, possibly even three years in a row. And I think um, the way it's shaping up this year, he's going to be the runner-up again. So I think he's going to go on a tear in these last couple of months as he as he tries his very best to win that award and, and carry Philadelphia toward the top of the East. So I'm picking Philly in that one. And uh, is it fair to say the main event, Dan, Golden State Warriors v. the Lakers? Just about, yeah. Unfortunately, Steph Curry's still out with that lingering injury for the Warriors, so they're not quite at full strength. And But for the Lakers, um, yeah, they're, they're just getting uh, used to this new lineup with all the trades they made at the deadline. So um, they've, they've got very little margin for error if they're going to make the playoffs from here. So every time LeBron and the Lakers step on the court, it's a main event. And I think they're going to kickstart this uh, little second act of the NBA season with a big win. There we have it. Well, uh, we'll park the NBA there, Dan, and talk some NBL. And it does, uh, well, it is the case, rather, that uh, we've got our final all set up. But uh, let's talk about how we got to this. So uh, it is going to be the Sydney Kings versus New Zealand Breakers in a best of five game uh, to decide this season's NBL champions. But uh, let's look at how this all came about. So how did we get these two squaring off in the NBL grand final, Dan? Yeah, so the Breakers um, won their season series over the Jack Jumpers, uh, their playoff series, I should say, not the season series. Um, so they earned their spot. They've been, um, yeah, they've been in red hot form, and um, they were just a better team in that series. Jack Jumpers did well to to snag a win down in Tassie, but um, yeah, New Zealand the better team there, and a bit of drama in the other series as uh, the Sydney Kings got up over the Cairns Taipans, but. Um, it was touch and go for a minute there as uh, the Titans got a win in the second game of the series, um, forcing a decisive game three. But um, yeah, in the process, Xavier Cooks, uh, the league MVP, um, copped an elbow to the face and, and fell down. And he actually got whistled for a flopping violation, which for those not familiar, a flop in basketball is basically where you pretend you've gotten hit in order to get a foul call. I'm sure, um, Ellis, as a, as a soccer man, you'd be very, very familiar with that tactic. But, um, yeah, in basketball now, they, they blow the whistle and say, nah, you flopped. I'm, I'm calling a technical foul against you. But the problem was, Xavier Cooks, the league MVP, had blood streaming from his face. So it was clearly not a flop. Um, his coach was heated on the court, dropping F-bombs at the officials. Eventually, he got ejected and and the game spiralled out of control from there. And um, Yeah, so the Kings lost that game and and had to win the next game to win the series. But they got the job done, as they so often have over the last however many years. They're such a good professional outfit. And, um, yeah, no surprise, here we are now with the two best teams all year, the Kings and the Breakers, playing off in the championship series. All right, well, we'll sort of uh, really delve into this next week because we might not get a winner or a result out of this for at least another two weeks, Dan. But with how things currently stand, if you were to take a stab at one of the two sides, who would it be? I know it's very hard not to say the Sydney Kings. It is, and I'm going to stick with the Sydney Kings. Um, Basketball's a team sport, but it's also just as much about individual brilliance sometimes in these high-stakes playoff games. And when you've got the league MVP on your side, um, you're always going to be pretty hard to beat. So I think Cooks and the Kings um, are going to claim another championship for Sydney. That's Dan Crouch, our basketball expert here on the flow. Dan, great to be with you once again. Enjoy the feast of NBA games on in the next couple of days, and we'll do it all again next week. Take it easy. Thanks, mate. Chat to you next week.